and welcome, I'm Lloyd and this is The Dressing Gown Diary. We'll do a little review show of round four and then into the final preview of the season. Well, it all kicked off last weekend with Italy hosting Wales in Rome. The Italians thought they were on for a win. They haven't won in Rome for donkey's years. But what happened? They did the... uh, they got over emotional. They did the Latin thing. You could see people crying during the national anthems. And then the mistakes started creeping in. We finally saw a Gatlin team playing pragmatic rugby, just building pressure and asking for the opposition to respond. And Italy couldn't. They kept making mistakes. They Clearly, Wales were quite lucky with the Rio Dyer try. But that is all the game plan that uh, Gatlin has. It's never been too expansive. It's about putting pressure on the opposition and then seeing what happens and they crumble. Uh, they just it was a bonus point win despite the nervous end from uh, Wales this is the first time they scored they scored four tries uh, but also it, it showed the basics started to come through the basics of rugby is run onto the ball at pace don't take it standing still Reese Webb started moving the ball considerably quicker and it had runners coming through at different angles and lines, which creates confusion for the defence. There was also an amazing tackle on the line by Owen Williams, holding up uh, Brex over the line, reminiscent of uh, Anton Dupont holding up uh, uh, Mac Hansen uh, in the previous rounds. Uh, well, then what happened? Um, now, some of you know that I've uh, actually dislocated my uh, left shoulder, so that's been pretty uncomfortable. But some of you also d- probably don't know that I've had to have uh, 30 stitches down my uh, right side because I split myself laughing so much at what happened at Twickers. France were electric, but they left points out there. England were woeful. There are real problems in the way England are structured in terms of team structure, in terms of how Twickenham is working. When you saw the fans empty after 70 minutes, you know that there are problems. But this was a France side who showed up and wanted to prove a point. They hadn't won at Twicker since 2005 and boy did they enjoy themselves. The the tries off first phase, rug, uh, first phase positions were electric. Um, England still caught. They have no game plan. What is their identity? Do they go with Smith? If you go with Smith, you've got to play an expansive game. Why ask him to play a restricted structures game? It's not him. You're taking away. If that's the one you want to play, play Farrell. Also, Van Forfeet was incredibly slow with the ball off the base. Didn't help. But ultimately, France just looked quicker, stronger, better, more skillful across the whole part. There was nowhere that England really can take comfort from. It's the worst defeat they've ever incurred at the home at, uh, at Twickers. It's the first time they've ever conceded 50 points at Twickers. Um, and it's only the second se- uh, sorry, first season they've ever lost two home games. So to say it, that England's performance this season has been woeful is probably too, too, too much of a, <laughs> a good thing. It's way worse than that. We move on to the final game of the weekend, saw Scotland host Ireland as Scotland pushed for the Triple Crown. Unfortunately, after a very, very tight first half, it was a bit like chess, both teams going full full throttle at it. I think, ultimately, Ireland then realised that they had the upper hand. Scotland were just a bit concerned that they didn't have enough gas, and that just showed through, and Ireland then showed enough quality to get over the line. Uh, interesting position on uh, Dwayne van der Merwe. I think that was a penalty try against Max ha- Mac Hansen. So what happened? He went in with his shoulders and di- there were no attempts to uh, to wrap the tackle. The referees made a, 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 an easy decision because they've looked at the grounding rather than focusing on was there penalty was there a, an infringement prior to the build-up. If there was an infringement and it's determined to be a no-arms tackle, it's a penalty try, seven points. In the event that the uh, conversion was missed, so it was only five, but also Dwayne van der Merwe would be yellow-carded. I don't know why referees aren't tighter on this. Liam Williams and Josh Adams frequently do it. You can see them go in with no arm tackles. I know it's try saving stuff, but still the rules are the rules. Either you have all of them or none of them. So we're on to Super Saturday today. This is one of the great days. We've all done well off uh, off BV's tips at Cheltenham this week. So we start today's action with Scotland versus Italy. Scotland going for uh, seven in a row. Could finish second if results go their way. They've obviously made changes with Finn Russell and uh, Stuart Hogg injured. Italy have only won one out of 41 matches since they last beat Scotland. Can they find a way? I think this will be a bit tighter than uh, perhaps people have thought about. Italy uh, Italy ha- are improving, but they haven't made the progress in terms of results. Scotland making changes. They will think this is an easy win, so it could be quite an interesting match to watch. France, Wales, wow. Points are needed for uh, France just to try and hope that uh, Ireland can't do it later. So you could see one of these glorious days where teams just keep outscoring each other. Uh, 
Gatlin's gone with an older, wiser team. He's dropped uh, the centre pairing of uh, the the young centre pairing and gone with uh, uh, Tompkins and George North. Uh, interesting to see whether they can form a partnership together. Tompkins is always been given sort of broken play positions. How can he play from uh, first phase? He gets wrapped up a bit as well, so it'll be interesting. But the uh, the big big news of this game is Falatau, Toby Falatau, what a servant he's been to Welsh rugby and the British Lions, making his 100th cap uh, on the day. He's one of these players that's just solid. He's always an 8 out of 10. Sometimes you don't even hear him, you don't know what's going on. But when he gets the ball, he always gets across the gain line, always makes it difficult for defences. You know, few will forget the uh, the try he scored in New Zealand uh, in the corner where he had quite a bit to do in the outside channel in the second test uh, in the Lions last tour uh, in New Zealand. Brilliant, brilliant player and uh, great servant. So it'll be uh, excellent to see him achieve his 100 cap. The final game of the weekend sees uh, Ireland pushing for the Grand Slam. It's uh, Paddy's weekend. Ireland have dominated Cheltenham. This is a big pressure game for Ireland. They've never won the Grand Slam at home. This will be the fourth Grand Slam if they do uh, convert. But this is like a knockout uh, World Cup game. Of course, Ireland have never won one of those either. Can they get up? Can they cope with the emotion? Can they cope with the pressure of the situation? They are playing a wounded England. If England can't front up, where do they go from there? Wales, uh, sorry, Ireland have obviously got Sexton. Um, he's on the cusp of becoming the record ever Six Nations point scorer. He's currently got 557 points, uh, level with um, Ren Nagara, so any points will take the lead. But Ireland, Ireland, Ireland will be backing this. They are such a good unit. They are the way forward. They will be strong. Uh, <coughs> they, they just know what they're doing that as a whole setter. Every single player knows how they fit into the organisation. England have obviously made further changes. Farrell back in. The, the England just don't know what they're doing. There is no game plan. So um, Ireland will expect to close this out quite comfortably. So uh, the last Freddie's flutter for the weekend is, uh, is actually back Ireland. I can just see them taking the handicap here. Uh, I haven't actually checked what it is, but I'll put it on the on the message. Uh, but it doesn't matter. They're just gonna they're, they're gonna win, and they will do more than the uh, the handicap. So back Ireland, ladies and gents, enjoy the six hours of rugby that are coming our way today. Have a great time, catcher.